Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening to the people in the room in China, especially. And in fact, uh, Gonzalo's presentation was already a good transition to my presentation because he already uh, mentioned about the Artemia genome. So uh, this long-awaited public, long for publication has been published recently. Uh, you find the title page there. It has been published in the journal at the left-hand side of the slide. You can see it, BMC Genomics. It's open access. At the right-hand side, you see that it has many uh, authors from different affiliations, too many to mention here, but I just want to give credit to the name, which is in the blue circle, Stephanie de Vos. Uh, the first author, she really did an enormous job with a high dedication for years to bring this undertaking to a good end. Uh, so next slide, please. So the paper is about the annotated Artemia genome. What is a genome? We know all this. The genome is actually all the DNA of an organism, all the genetic information. There have been efforts in the past, published in literature, to describe the genome, parts of the genome, uh, the transcriptome. Uh, but OK, this uh, is the most comprehensive, the most complete effort so far in describing the Artemia genome. It's not 100% complete yet, but it's rather complete. So the next slide, indeed, what is genome annotation then? Well, as the first line says, annotation is a process of identifying any functional elements of the DNA sequence, with other words, identifying genes and what these genes are doing. And just to highlight uh, the significance of all this, uh, I, I borrowed two uh, definitions from literature that I found saying, first, the annotation actually gives meaning to the genome. And the second uh, quote there, I even like it more, annotation bridges the gap from, let's say, the, the naked sequence of the DNA to the biology of the organism. Annotation tells us what the organism is and does and how it functions. So next slide, please. Of course, yeah, no time here to go into detail, but from left to right, uh, DNA has to be sequenced, has to be read. For this purpose, it has to be cut into pieces, shearing, it is called. Then these small pieces, relatively small pieces, are sequenced, they are read. And then the whole original text, so to speak, has to be assembled again, it has to be reconstructed to its original sequence. That's the assembly. Needless to say, this comes with quite sophisticated bioinformatic tools. You need quite some skills to bring this to a good end. And then next comes the annotation. And this is then identifying with which genes the sequences correspond and what these genes are doing. Again, this comes with it bioinformatic tools, comparing with databases of other genomes, etc., etc. And well, Gonzalo already brought this up uh, through this exercise. Indeed, 20 to, almost 22,000 genes, 22,000 genes could be identified. And this corresponds with a more or less 90% assembly of the genome. So if we have the entire text, so to speak, 100% of the genome, 90% has been reconstructed. So as I said a while ago, the exercise is not complete yet. It still needs uh, fine tuning and completion. So next slide, please. So we can use this database now to describe processes and pathways, just as people have been doing in the past for plant models. Arabidopsis is, used to be a plant model to describe them, to study the genome of uh, crop plants, such like uh, mice. So in the same way, we can use the annotated Athena genome as a model for crustaceans, including aquaculture crustaceans. We know that the genome of white shrimp, Lithoponase fanamei, is available as well. 
We also know that Artemia is a so-called extremophile organism, so living in a very specific environment with all kinds of interesting features. So the paper is also describing the Artemia genome with, for example, that one of Weichen, with the genome of other uh, invertebrate organisms, and the paper is describing what the Artemia genome has in common with those other genomes, and also with what is specific for Artemia. This means as well that a variety of processes, traits of interest, you find them there at the bottom of the slide, the list is not complete, they can be studied through what is called gene discovery, as the title of the slide says. So trying to identify genes that correspond with certain characteristics of interest that get into action that are expressed in certain conditions. And the next slide, please, uh, gives one example of this. There are several examples of this in the paper, very interesting examples. But for instance, the authors are analyzing which genes are expressed in two different salt conditions. Standard salt condition 30 grams per liter and high salt conditions. And then, well, as uh, Gonzalo already mentioned, the authors found that 670 genes were 670 genes were differentially expressed. And by the way, of these 670, 32% have no, no known function yet. We just see that they are differently expressed in the two conditions, but a whole lot of them, we don't know actually what they do. So there is still work to do here. So I'm coming to the end of my slides. Uh, so where is all this information available? Uh, it has been uploaded on an interactive online platform, Orkai. It has nothing to do with the whale species, but okay, it's a letter word for online resource, et cetera, et cetera. It is operated by summarizing in the blue circle, the Flemish Institute of Bio Biotechnology that is linked to our university. Uh, this public, uh, sorry, on this database, several public genomes are available. You see a few there, they are arranged alphabetically, but ours, Artemia, next slide, please, uh, is also uploaded there and you can browse it freely. It's open access, so to speak, uh, just to read, to consult it. However, if you want to change, you can work in it. Uh, it comes with a manual, of course, uh, quite an extensive manual. And if you want to work in it, you need to have an account. This account can be uh, asked for by simply contacting the head of our laboratory, Professor Peter Bossier, uh, just explaining uh, the work that uh, you intend to do. And of course, uh, we are sure that, uh, as previous speakers have been saying, that this Artima genome is indeed a very powerful tool to make progress in a number of the activities that have been listed by uh, Patrick Sorgelos and also that were brought up by Gonzalo Carhart. Thank you very much. Thank you.